And we're back with another quick tutorial on oxygen not included. And this time we're tackling metal volcanoes. Though, uh, I really sort of feel like I should apologize for this design before I even start because this is the most brutally simplistic design I've ever completed. Um, and I, I want to include a few demonstrations of other stuff I tested just to show you why I eventually settled on this because this is the simplest thing I've ever come up with in terms of a design for taming a volcano. First up, all you're doing is you have, well, water or steam down here. Then the cooling for the steam turbine is provided by the output of the steam turbine itself. The steam, the steam turbine outputs water at 95C. So when it outputs the water, it passes through here, cooling this area down, keeping it just below 100 degrees. That's all. This provides heat. The steam turbine eats the heat, and then the steam turbine provides a little bit of self-cooling, meaning you don't even need to... You need an aqua tuner, you don't need a thermoregulator, you don't need anything. This just self-cools itself all the way down. We'll, we'll go into more details on it later. The only thing you have to do is put about two tons of water in here. If you use a small amount of water, say 200 kilos, then the gold when it comes out will actually dump in enough temperature straight away that this will overheat the steam turbine and cause a bit of a problem. Well, it'll cause the steam turbine to run at a hotter temperature, which generates more heat, and the cooling coming out of here won't be able to keep up as much. So just two tons of water, a box like this, and you're good to go. I double liquid lock this so that you could have a vacuum in the middle and you could prevent any sort of temperature transfer getting out. It just makes sure that, uh, yeah, all that temperature stays nicely sealed in. In this design, though, the gold is going to come out at, what's that, 125C? Well, yeah, it takes a bit of time. This volcano is currently dormant. Eventually, the gold will give away all its heat. It just takes a long time. Yeah, that is the most simplistic design I could possibly come up with, and I think that is stupidly simplistic. However, up here we have a slightly more advanced version. This is one I was working on earlier before eventually I just stripped it out down to bare bones. This design here does pretty much the same thing. There's two tons of water in here, but we've put in some automation, conveyor rails, and all sorts of fancy pants stuff, just, just because we were trying to do this nice and neatly. Oh, and there's a bunch of automation as well, because of course there is. Uh, all that happens here is the gold comes out, it gets dumped straight into a conveyor loader, the loader sends it out across the rails, and then these rails are hooked up to a conveyor shutoff. The conveyor shutoff is hooked up to a little bit of automation. This particular automation here is effectively just rotating back and forth. Every 30 seconds, it activates for one second, and that allows one piece of gold to pass through, meaning 20 kilos of gold can pass out of the system. Boom, there we go. Oh, sometimes two get through. It's not perfect. Maybe I should limit that to 0.5. You know what? No, no, it doesn't make a difference. The reason it doesn't make a difference is because the moment this stuff gets on the rail, it transfers heat so quickly. I mean, even the stuff at the very end of the rail, like, what are we looking at here? Contents, 119, 119. They're all down to below 120 to 125. The only thing that activates them is this thermal sensor. It says if the temperature in here is below 127 degrees, which it definitely is, then it can still allow stuff to go out. That's it. And there's a battery in there. This whole system is self-powered. So the power comes off of here, plugs into the battery, Battery just is there to even at the power flow and uh, provide power over time. You could, of course, hook this onto your grid if you wanted to. Oh, same with this one down here. This could be hooked onto a grid so you could siphon off the power. For demonstration purposes, I didn't really consider it a necessity. Uh, so this was probably the, the simplistic, most simplistic one I came up with. I have the output coming off from this. This uh, goes over here and dumps down this side, so usually you get a little bit more chilling on this side. should hopefully make the goal just that little bit cooler when it comes out. Now, the reason I don't bother cooling down the gold any more than 120 is, in most games now, you tend to make yourself a, a box base, have a, an all your dupes ex exit in exosuits. So I thought, why bother cooling down the metal anymore? It used to be I was cooling it down to 40 degrees so my dupes could handle it with their bare hands, but then I realized after a while none of them were ever touching it with their bare hands. They were all of us in the atmosuits, so what was the point? Uh, up here, where there was some other attempts at doing things, thermoregulators, all sorts of stuff. But honestly... This here is probably the simplest and easiest form you can use. And this will work on not just gold volcanoes, though. What will you do when it comes to a metal volcano? Because a metal volcano, or an iron volcano, and a copper volcano produce an awful lot more heat. So what do we have to do to make something like this work on an iron or a metal? Or an iron or a copper? It turns out all you need is two steam turbines. Well, not quite. Two steam turbines and three tons of water. The reason for the three tons of water is the three tons of water dilutes down the heat enough that even when this does erupt, it, erupt, it only drives up the temperature just, just enough that the steam turbines will activate, but not so much that it's dumping too much heat into the steam turbines. So as you see here, this volcano is about to erupt, and when it does, we can just slow this down a bit. And you see the temperature of the water is going up, but it's not going up hugely. The reason being, there's just 
so much thermal mass in terms of all that water that it can only heat it up by a few degrees. So yes, the steam turbines will activate, but they're not going to go up to such high temperatures that they're going to require a lot of cooling. You can see as the temperature goes up, they produce more heat, heat in terms of KDTUs coming out the top, which means it needs more cooling. And the cooling is being provided by the liquid coming out of it. So we've got liquid coming out of here at 96 degrees. By the time it gets to the end, it's up to 98. So the, the output of the steam turbines, they're, they're literally cooling themselves down. The only way we can break this is if we dump so much heat in here that the output of the steam turbines can't keep up with the cooling, at which point they'll knock themselves offline. Now, I was worried during the dormancy phases and things like this, this could break. So I just let it run overnight. And after 333 cycles, yeah, no, this thing has had no problems. It's gone through active and dormancy phases. It's done all those things. Still works just fine. Only downside of it, though, is the iron is about 542 degrees. That was something that was kind of an annoyance. It's still 542 degrees. But so long as you're using it for building stuff, it should immediately lose its heat the moment you pull it out of here. Well, the moment you use it to build something. Though you might want to put some more automation on it. For example, the previous designs I had, the one for uh, siphoning it through shipping rails, that might be an option in this case, especially considering you have a much larger box to work with. You know what, let's throw that together right now. One quick debug later, and what we have here is, well, an awful lot of iron. Well, I did a quick debug and then went shopping, so I let this run for a couple of hundred cycles, just to make sure it was stable. Uh, yeah, we have managed to chill all the, the petroleum down to 125C. All we've done is we run it across the conveyor rails, they queue up at this uh, conveyor shutoff, and then the conveyor shutoff has a timer on it. And when the timer counts down to zero, it's just about to hit it there now. This should turn on the conveyor shutoff just for one second. See, it's turned green. There's a one second uh, countdown timer on this one. And after one second, it will shut off again because this whole thing is reset through the reset gate down here. So the reset gate activates. Yep. And now we should see a piece of iron drop out of there. So that's 20 kilos of iron that just got dropped out, and it does that every 25 seconds. 25 seconds works out about 480 kilos a cycle, but that's way more than this iron volcano can produce. But you also got to bear in mind, occasionally this will be over 127 degrees, so it won't always be on. But from what I've seen, yeah, 25 degrees is plenty, plenty of time for the iron to cool down on the rail. The iron leaving here is what? It's 121, 124. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool already. It may need some more tweaking depending on how much iron is coming out of your volcano. But for sure, cost efficiency. I mean, if you don't want to, you, you don't have to put in all this automation. If you don't mind if the iron's 500 degrees, yeah, just stick in a box beneath this, throw in three tons of steam, you're done. <laughs> if you're willing to invest some steel, then a smart battery, conveyor loader, auto sweeper, and a little bit of steel for the conveyor rails down here because, yeah, there's there's molten iron coming out of here, and you should be good to go. I did invest in, uh, well, since this was a debug map, I just used steel for the automation as well, but that should be buildable out of copper or gold. It shouldn't get that hot in here. And all in all, you end up with 125 degree iron just coming out with no cost to you. As in, this entire thing is self-contained. All the power that's required to run this and cool it and do everything all comes from the steam turbines and the heat from the iron. Uh, you could even siphon that iron off. The main advantage here is that you don't have to cool down the steam turbines. Normally, you have to put in an aqua tuner or a thermoregulator or something to help cool down the steam turbines. But because we've put in so much water, the, this never gets hot enough to... Uh, because we have so much water, the water coming out of here is never going to be have to do too much cooling. The reason being, the amount of heat generated by the steam turbines up top is directly proportional to the amount of heat they're destroying per second out of the water or the steam that's being fed to them. So the lower the temperature of the steam that goes in, the easier it is for them to cool themselves down. I, think, I can't remember the cutoff. I think it's about 139 degrees. If it goes above 139, they start to stifle themselves. This does not go above 139 degrees, the steam down here, which means these don't stifle themselves, which means they can just keep cooling themselves down. The only thing I was worried about was that during the dormancy phase, the, the heat from the steam in here would leak through and cause this to overheat so that when the volcano came back online, it would be a problem. That doesn't seem to have happened. That's why I ran it for so many cycles, just to be safe. The insulation made all the way around the edges here is obsidian. It's, yeah, it's all obsidian. There's nothing but obsidian around here. Let's give me a mineral overview. Yeah, it doesn't really... Yeah, well, it's not very good. Well, oh, no, it turns out obsidian does not have a color that's very... Hmm, visible. Never mind. So, yes, obsidian tiles just all the way around the edge, so you don't even need fancy ceramic insulation. This whole thing can be made out of basics. And, yeah, like I said, I'm really sorry that it's just this pathetically simple. Uh, I've been wasting time using aqua tuners and cooling loops and everything, and nope, nope, you can just let it cool itself and be done with it. Even more ridiculous for this particular design is the pipes up here, the radiant liquid pipes. I made them out of copper by accident. I meant to make them out of aluminum, but it turns out it still works with copper pipes. So you can make it out of copper. Uh, the insulated pipes I made out of sandstone because I wasn't paying attention. So even though I'm using the worst sandstone insulated pipes and I'm using copper, which 
Okay, it's about equivalent to gold, but it's not as good as aluminum, which is quite plentiful on most of the maps now, or several of the map types. Yeah, this will work with pretty much the most basic materials imaginable. All you need is a bit of plastic for the steam turbines, some lead, some copper. You're good to go. It's kind of disturbingly easy. With just a little bit of prep work and enough water, you're good to go. Uh, a quick demonstration to show how you can mess this up, and that's by not putting enough steam in the system and how to recognize the symptoms. So in this one I've put in 400 kilos of steam, or was it 200? Uh, 2 to 400 kilos of steam. Now when the volcano erupts, it's going to generate enough heat that it will drive the temperature in here high enough that the steam turbine will potentially start st stifling itself. Uh, speed this up a bit. No, oh, no, it managed to survive that. Ah, there we go. You'll notice there it's overheating. The generator has gone to 100C. What happened here is the water down here was so hot, or the steam got so hot, that it's causing this to stifle itself. However, it won't actually kill it. It will still sort of stutter. What happens is it runs for a bit, overheats because of the heat it's generating, but then that water that comes out from when it just ran for a bit will help siphon off some of the heat, and then it will slowly start to bring itself back under control. However, this is... Mm, I'd rather not do this. This seems incredibly dangerous because if it cuts out at the wrong point or time or... Yeah, you dump too much heat in there. It's much easier to just dump in two tons of steam. Make sure you have two tons of water dumped into the area before it starts erupting and you're good to go. And if you really want to be right, just to put in a double liquid lock so you can gain access to the area again. And then if you need to put in more water, you can. Uh, for this system in here, I was using... I've been using aluminum pipes for these ones. I don't know if these will work with copper. That might be something you want to be aware of. Uh, just uh, for testing purposes, I was using aluminum, and I haven't bothered doing a stress test with gold on these. Gold or copper, so... Mm, at your own risk. But yes, this is it. The most simplistic volcano tamer I've ever been able to design. For the gold ones, I was putting oxygen in here just to test if oxygen would work. On the iron one, I was using hydrogen in it surrounding the steam turbines. I'm not sure how much of a difference it'll have, but uh, it seems to work with the gold. I don't know if using oxygen with, on the iron volcanoes will work because uh, there's not as much thermal capacity in the oxygen. So two kilos of oxygen, two kilos of hydrogen, whichever you prefer or whichever you have access to, it should be quite doable. Also bear in mind, this uh, these were tested on quite beastly monstrosities. This was a, I think this is quite a nasty uh, gold volcano. These ones, not so much, but the iron one tested on the worst one possible, so you should be good to go. Apologies again for how just blazingly sl stupidly simple this is, but... Yeah, I like to make my designs as simple and foolproof as possible and robust. Okay, if there's any complication in it, I try and strip it out as much as possible. Oh, and on that note, if someone knows of a way to maybe simplify this automation a bit more, uh, I don't like the fact that I have three, I'm using three gates to do one simple task. All I want to do is drop out 20 kilos of, uh, let the conveyor shut off, turn on, and drop out 20 kilos once every 25 to 30 seconds. And that's all I want. But I somehow have to use three logic gates to do it. I'm sure someone has a better way of doing it. If you do, just uh, drop it in the comments and I'll uh, update the description if anyone uh, is interested. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed and this was at least mildly informative for you and uh, good luck.